Topic 8.1, we're setting the stage for the Cold War and also the independence movements that followed, that's called decolonization. So in looking at topic 8.1 in your homework, we have the Heimler history video, and then you have a choice either to take notes from the AMSCO or take notes from the uh, investigation. Then you would review the PowerPoint quickly to see if there's anything new that you missed. You would take a look at the Quizlet to see if you know most of the historical developments. You would read one to three Albert multiple choice questions, and then you answer the questions on the study guide. And in this way, you get a little analysis, you get a little background context, you review your historical developments, and you answer the essential questions that prove you know what you're, what, what you're talking about, that you absorb the historical content. Then you come to class and Mr. D assesses your skill set. Right? Well, let's start with the Heimler history. You open up the Heimler history video and you say, welcome to 8.1, setting the stage for the Cold War. And he goes off on his tangent. Following World War II, you had the Yalta Conference, the Potsdam Conference, the Tehran Conference. You had the separation of um, Germany, which set the stage for the Cold War in which the United States of America and the Soviet Union emerged as the global superpowers. Right? And they carried heavy economic and political influence with them. And the Soviet Union wanted to use the Warsaw Pact as a way to spread communism. And America's response to the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan were parts of this big idea, this foreign policy, American foreign policy called containment. Right? And following those developments came the nuclear arms race, the military industrial complex where they militarize, right? And then following that with the promises that Britain and France made to their colonies. If you participate in World War II and help us, we'll promise you independence. And they didn't keep those promises in many colonies. And you have the independence movements of decolonization. So now you have your notes from the Heimler history video, everything that I just said. Now you're going to open up your AMSCO. You open up your AMSCO and what do you see when you look through your AMSCO? I already have Heimler history notes. Oh, bringing the war to an end. Oh, the big three. Oh, I know who the big three were. Oh, the Tehran Conference. That's familiar. The Yalta Conference. That's familiar. The Potsdam Conference. That's familiar. Harry Truman. He's familiar. He's all in my notes already. What was the massive destruction in Europe? That was from World War II. This U.S.-Soviet rivalry right out of Heimler's history, right? The start of the Cold War where they talked about the hydrogen bomb, led to the nuclear arms race, the military industrial complex. Do you see all these words in bold? I'm reading to you. The breakdown of empire's self-determination is the independence movements of the colonies to end old imperialism of the 20th century and the 19th century, which looked like decolonization. So everything you just got out of Heimler history, you just got out of AMSCO. AMSCO just reinforced all those terms that you're supposed to know. Okay, I'm done with my AMSCO. Mr. D, I didn't do AMSCO. I did the investigation. Boom, here's the investigation. Why did the political relationship between the United States and the USSR change? Well, first they give you a little background of what it was like during World War II, they were allies. And then after World War II, it changed. In what form? Well, the political documents, the Yalta Conference, the United Nations, Yalta and Potsdam. Here it is, right? The same thing that's in AMSCO. It gives you even more in depth. And then it talks about the peace conference in Yalta. How is it different than Potsdam? The birth of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union as global superpowers, right? And then look how it separates the Western Bloc, the United States and NATO formed and the Warsaw Pact and the allies of the USSR and the Eastern Bloc. Very clear and simple, the same historical developments, the military alliances through the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan under the foreign policy of containment I'm reiterating again and again. Do you see how this is all aligned? All the historical developments are the same, okay? Cold War alliances with the NATO and the Warsaw Pact, right? The Berlin blockade, the separation of Germany between Eastern Germany and Western Germany. It all raised tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union. And then you have the atomic bomb. Well, you got the Berlin Wall here. And then they talk about the development of nuclear warfare that raised tensions around the world. So now we have everything aligned. Everything looks simple. 
well, what's the next thing that you're supposed to do here? Well, now I'm supposed to go look at the PowerPoint. Well, here's my PowerPoint. I'm supposed to skim through it. What was the Cold War? I know that. Why did the Cold War start? Here's, I know this already. Maybe there's some new information here of tensions, right? There were disputes between Germany and Poland. That's the separation of Germany. The different visions, communism and capitalism, right? It breaks it down a little bit more, but you know this already, right? And then it talks a little bit about propaganda. It talks a little bit about how the Cold War is officially declared. Quotes out of the documents, the Iron Curtain, the Berlin Wall, political cartoons that reflect that, the policy of containment. Look at it right there, right? How did the U.S. implement the policy of containment? Look, the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan. Do you see how this is redundant? The division of Germany, all of the historical developments are there. For you to say, I don't, I don't understand, I don't believe it, okay? This is at a reading lexile that a ninth grader can understand. That's not in an AP class, okay? You have the Berlin Wall, and then you have the fall at the end, the formation of NATO, and some disturbing events like the adoption of NSC-68, which is the atomic bomb policy, the nuclear proliferation. You see that, and it ends. The end, was it a good end? Let's find out. So we go back here again. What's the next thing I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to look at my Quizlet. Now that I took my notes, let's see what I know. The big three, do I know what that means? The Tehran conference, do I know what that means? The Yalta conference, the Potsdam conference, the Cold War, the hydrogen bomb, Dwight D. Eisenhower, military industrial complex, self-determination. That's all they give you. You should know every one of those. It should take you 30 seconds to go through. And you click back and forth, which would give you, obviously you can flip it the other way. So you read this first, all right? Finally, you would go back and say, what's left? Albert, okay, now I come over to Albert. Here's a paragraph, but I always read the question first. Stalin blames catastrophic wars, such as the Second World War, on which of the following? Stalin blames the Second World War on who? Fascism, communism, Marxism, or capitalism? Stalin, after the war. Do you even have to read that paragraph? It's capitalism. Okay, you know the answer to that. You don't even have to read the paragraph. After doing that homework and looking at this, you know the answer immediately, okay? What's left? The study guide. Now you come over to the study guide. Look at the questions in the study guide. Explain the significance of the Tehran conference, the Potsdam conference, the Yalta conference, the U.S.-Soviet rivalry. What was the Cold War? What's the military industrial complex? What is self-determination in the decolonization independence movements? That's all they're asking you. Historical context of the Cold War. It's all aligned. It's all plain as day. It's all crystal clear. If there are any questions ever about any of the homework, I should receive a wealth of questions. I, re I should receive emails, right? That's all aligned, easy, and crystal clear for you. Now, looking at all that, you sit down in my class. Let's look at what we're going to look at now. Now let's take everything we've learned in our notes and apply it in the lesson. It's all crystal clear aligned. We're walking up a staircase using higher level historical reasoning skills. Okay. Setting the stage for the Cold War and decolonization. Welcome to Unit 8. Welcome to Topic 8.1. This is your class activity the origins of the Cold War. So we're going to examine the global context of the Cold War. Context, contextualization, and the decolonization movements in Africa and Asia. We're going to use the AP historical skill, contextualization, the background story. Let's go. Setting the stage for the Cold War and decolonization, the thematic focus, the theme is government. So our focus is government. What's our goal? Explain the historical context of the Cold War. What was the background story? Let's zoom into the historical developments. We have anti-imperialist sentiment. Those poor colonies who were promised freedom and independence after World War II for risking their lives and fighting for those countries were lied to. And that led to an anti-imperialist sentiment. And you get decolonization independent movements. Also, there were technological and economic gains as well by various nations as the shift of the global balance and power happens and occurs and unfolds. What are the major policies we're going to focus on most specifically? 
Yalta, Potsdam, Tehran, the military industrial complex, the Warsaw Pact, the foreign policy of American containment, the non-aligned movement of those independent nations and the nuclear atomic proliferation scared everybody. In the 1980s, they used to have bomb threats like nuclear threats, the 70s, 60s, 70s and 80s. And instead of you going and hiding in the corner of an active shooter, in my world, when I was your age, we would have to climb underneath a desk. If you were in the fallout, if you were in the ground zero of a nuclear uh, explosion, you would be vaporized, as you saw in the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. But if you were in the fallout zone, a desk might possibly save your life if the building was to collapse on top of you. Okay. So moving on. What was the Cold War? It was a bitter state of indirect conflict that existed between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Okay, this was indirect conflict. It was not direct uh, war where they actually shot at each other. Okay, they had things called proxy wars, and we'll talk about those developments. So why did the Cold War, war start? It went all the way back to after World War One. The U.S. refused after World War One to extend diplomatic relations to the new communist nation. There were already tensions there, the seeds for tension. So the US was angered when the Soviets signed the non-aggression pact with Germany, right? At the beginning of World War II and Hitler lied to them anyway, right? But that raised tensions. And additionally, Stalin was angered when the US entered uh, the war and went to North Africa to help the British first. And Stalin's like, what about us? That even helped raise tensions before World War II is over. World War II ends, they divide Germany. Now, you, the British, the American, the French zone are the uh, democracy capitalist zones. And then you have East Germany, which is controlled through the Soviet Union. No free elections, okay? And the spread of communism begins. Now tensions really raise. So after World War II, the Soviet Union controlled Eastern Europe. No desire for free elections. This was autocratic, okay? Oligarchy. Small group rules everything. Stalin was the totalitarian ruler at first, and then it moved into more of like an autocratic oligarchy. So the Cold War lasted all the way to 1991, all right, and it involved threats of force by the USSR. It led to a state of tension between the US and the USSR, okay? Truman's policy of containment meant that communism cannot be allowed to spread to neighboring countries. And we offered economic aid and protection to those countries. Okay, what did that look like? The Truman document doctrine was anti-communist support, money and military, and the Marshall Plan was global economic recovery, even for communist nations. After what we watched happen with the end, with the Great Depression and how that led to war, we helped a lot of countries, okay, 17 billion over four years to 16 Western European nations to prevent another war to happen. Okay, very important to understand those historical developments. We also have the nuclear arms race, right? And on 23rd of September, 1949, the U.S. learned the USSR developed their own nuclear bomb. From then on, fear the bomb. It dictated life in America as well as diplomatic relations around the world. For the first time ever, there was talk of the destruction of the free world through nuclear war called nuclear winter. Okay, an actual fear of the end of the world of human civilization as we know it, okay? All right, here we are, our student activity, the background context practice. Here's where you put it all together and prove you can do this. Before looking at the prompt, think about the broader historical context we just talked about. How did we get to this point in history? What is happening in the world either immediately before during or after the time period that's impacting this event. Leave after out. Let's talk about what we just went over and reviewed before and during. Okay. Analyze to the extent to which the Cold War changed political relationships between major world powers from 1945 to 1991. I'm going to give you about seven minutes to do this. Make sure you use at least five historical development vocabulary terms in your explanation. On the left side of the screen, you should see my example of historical developments and explanations. And on the right side of the screen should be your paragraph. All right. Here are all the possible vocabulary words which reflect historical developments, vocabulary terms, right? 
So you have to use America and the Soviet Union, right? Because they don't name them in the prompt. They want you to name America and the Soviet Union. That has to be in the, the uh, context. You could also use these. The end of World War II reflected in Tehran, Potsdam, and Yalta conferences, the partition of Germany, the Soviet spread of communism versus the U.S. policy of containment, right? The military industrial complex, building militaries, spreading them all over areas of uh, uh, democratic control versus uh, Soviet control. The Truman Doctrine, the Marshall Plan, the Warsaw Pact, the non-aligned movement, the atomic nuclear arms race, the big three growing independence movements in Africa and Asia. In other words, decolonization movements. So you can use these and more. So I would pick five out of here. Okay. Now, here is a very long drawn out explanation of context. You can't possibly type all that in the time that you have. So what I gave you is what's in gray. What's in gray would get the point. So I identified the United States of America and the Soviet Union, and then I used one, two, three, four, five historical developments. Let's read. After the end of World War II, the Potsdam, Tehran, and Yalta conferences shifted the political landscape and the United States of America and the Soviet Union became global superpowers and rivals. Well, right in there, I used Potsdam, Tehran, Yalta, you know, I, I don't even have to use those. The ones in yellow, if I just use those, I'm good enough, but I added more, okay? With the partition of Germany, tensions began to rise between Western democratic states and the autocratic Soviet spread of communism through the Warsaw Pact. The US responded with the policy of containment put forth through the Truman Doctrine and Marshall Plan as a way to provide economic support for war-torn countries, as well as to assert anti-communist political influence. Stop. Right there, you got the point for context in the LEQ essay or the DBQ essay. Boom, right there, you're done. If you want a total explanation, the atomic nuclear arms race further raised tensions between America and the Soviet Union. And for the first time in human history, global destruction became a reality. As a reaction to this, the non-aligned movement was a way for other countries to avoid political involvement in the Cold War and also as a way for new states to assert their independence as a growing number of decolonization movements developed in Africa and Asia. So Mr. D, I didn't say exactly what was in gray, but I did mention the nuclear arms race or the non-aligned movement, the Cold War, decolonization. I mentioned those in my explanation. As long as you have about five, you're guaranteed to get the point, okay? So it can be anything in bold that I have in this paragraph. Anything in bold, if you have five of any of those in bold, the odds are, and you know, they're explained correctly, obviously, the odds are very high you're going to get the point for context, part of the rubric for the long essay and the document-based essay. Now, what to take away from all this today? Well, what should I remember, Mr. D? Well, remember that the Cold War, it changed the global political landscape. How? Well, America and the Soviet Union became global superpowers with a heavy economic and political influence. And American and Soviet foreign policies, they raised political tensions, not only between those two, but through the nuclear programs, nuclear proliferation, they raised political tensions around the world. Well, the nuclear arms race had global implications and 19th century colonialism, as we knew it, 19th and 20th century colonialism, comes to an end. When constructing context for an LEQ or a DVQ essay, always use the historical development vocabulary words, at least five. I hope this helps.